Did you know that page numbers are not the correct way of referencing any part of the Ontario Building Code? Weird, right? Let me tell you a bit more about this. Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Francesco and with this short video, I want to show you how to properly reference any portion of the Ontario Building Code. What I mean by that is this. Say you want to tell someone where you found specific information in the Ontario Building Code. In any other book, you would simply refer them to a specific page in that book, not with the Ontario Building Code. I'm going to tell you exactly how to reference a specific requirement in the Ontario Building Code, I promise. However, I need to provide some explanation first to get us to that point, and this explanation is very boring, but I also think it's very important. If you cannot make it through the explanation because you keep on falling asleep, that's perfectly fine, I promise. I will post the requirement for referencing on the screen right now. And I will also provide chapter markers or timestamps on the timeline below, so you can skip to how to reference time marker so you can skip all the boring stuff and go to the how. Now, let me start with the boring stuff. I mean, I mean the explanation. As I'm recording this video, Ontario is using the 2012 edition of the Ontario Building Code. The word edition refers to the year when the building code, in this case the Ontario Building Code, was released with major changes. It is the year you see on the cover of the Ontario Building Code. I've put on the screen for you the list of all editions of the Ontario Building Code from the latest one, so the 2012 edition, to the very first edition in 1975. So you can see that including the 2012 edition, there have only been seven editions of the Ontario Building Code. However, since 2012 until now, about 10 years later, the Ontario Building Code has published many revisions to the 2012 edition. Revisions are also called amendments, and they typically represent small changes that do not require a whole new edition of the Ontario Building Code. As I'm filming this video, there have been 19 amendments to the 2012 edition of the Ontario Building Code. Anyway, the amendments will often affect very small portions of the Ontario Building Code, so they will result in one page or so being replaced in various locations in the Building Code. So people will typically print out these pages, punch holes in them, and then replace the corresponding pages in the Ontario Building Code. You're with me so far? Is that okay? Sometimes the amendment is actually to introduce a new page between two existing pages. For example, say between page 42 and 43 of Division B, Part 3 of the Ontario Building Code. That is why you get those pages with letters after them, like page 42A and page 42B, including blank pages labeled as this page intentionally left blank. Because page 43 remained unchanged, and there was enough to add some text on page 42a, but not enough that that text then spilt over onto page 42b. Weird, right? Sometimes, if enough consecutive pages are changed, especially at the end of any part of the Ontario Building Code, you may also get new pages being added, and that means new page numbers. So, you can see how different people may have copies of the Ontario Building Code that may differ depending on whether they've kept that copy up to date. That is why we don't use page numbers to reference something in the Building Code, because sometimes the same page may not look the same between two different copies of the Building Code. I hope this makes sense. Instead of page numbers, you want to use the numbering system that has been set up by the Ontario Building Code. 
The numbering system is listed on one of the pages of the preface to the Ontario Building Code to show you how you reference any requirement in the Ontario Building Code. I'm going to reproduce on screen the decimal numbering system that is used by the Ontario Building Code. The left column is what I call the level, and it is identified by a series of numbers, letters, dots, and brackets, as you can see. The right column is the name for that level. The name of each level automatically includes the levels above, above them, so you don't have to repeat those levels' names. So for example, this here would be read as clause 3.6.2.3.1F. You would not mention the levels above clause, so part, section, subsection, or article, or sentence. Although sometimes I do, okay? To help my students. By saying clause, you automatically include that everything above it is included as well. So part, section, subsection, article, and sentence. For this video, we will ignore paragraph and subparagraph because they are a little less common throughout the code. When looking through the Ontario Building Code, you'll find that the first four levels, so from part all the way to article, are always written in the Ontario Building Code all together on the same line. Whereas the remaining levels, starting with sentence, are always listed vertically one under the other. So how about we try this, okay? How about I open a page at random in the building code and I will pick a random item on that page and we practice identifying it. And okay, it looks like it's in part three and let's take a moment to identify this. Let's identify this letter B here. You see this in the middle of the page, more or less, with the text, a room or suite provided the possible corridor complies with sentence 3.3.1.96 and clause 3.4.2.5.1D. Can you see how this is at the clause level? Here is article 3.3.1.4, which is also titled Public Corridor Separation. Here is sentence 4, and here is clause B. So to identify this specific requirement, we would say clause 3.3.1.4, 1F. I hope this makes sense. You know what? I think I've taken enough of your time. I hope that this video helps you a little bit with properly referencing any requirement in the Ontario Building Code without using page numbers. I want to thank you so much for your time. Take care, stay well, and have a lovely day.